Yo, it's Julian on the Brown Note, and even though I mainly review albums, I just did the Verocco EP, and I'm probably always going to review a burial track, as he's one of my all-time favourite artists, William Bevin, the legend, probably the most important electronic music solo act since Aphex Twin. He's done a, he did an EP which I, I gave a lot of kudos to earlier this year, which was very mad. The hardest stuff he's done for a, a long time percussively, like really, really hardcore percussion. And now we get the opposite. So he's done a split EP with Code 9. So Code 9, Steve Goodman from Scotland, is the record label Hyperdub founder. And that record label has been probably the most important electronic music label easily in the UK um, this century um, and arguably globally as it certainly touched its toes outside of just being sort of like what was originally sort of a plethora of the UK's finest dubstep artists around the sort of 2005 era to all the way through to Chicago Footwork the only DJ Rashad album before he passed away was on Hyperdub and so on and their collections as well have been um, superb. Their like anniversary ones have been excellent. So he has done a split EP with Burial, and that's at least two they've done together. Um, and virtually all of Burial's music has been released on the Hyperdub label, bar the odd one or two tracks here and there. And this one's called Phone Glow slash Eyes Go Blank. Um, I guess if there are musical genres associated with burial, garage, UK garage and two-step and rave music are probably the three most prominent. And this goes straight into two-step. This time around, it is one of his most commercial and easy to listen to releases. Um, it's very light on its feet. Uh, the last one hammered you, like brutally. This one is actually really easy to listen to, very hooky. There's lots and lots of vocal hooks on this one often in his um chipmunk soul style uh, but very good hooks nonetheless um it's a lot lighter on its feet uh percussively it's not jackhammer beats at all or blast beats or break beats per se it's got a really light two-step garage vibe i have a theory about genres like shoegaze which is they become super trendy and die a quick death and that saves them because like garage and like UK garage and two step is still really trendy now, but there are other genres like big beat and so on and Brit pop which outstay their welcome a long way, and some of the music becomes very commercially successful, and people don't go back to it. Like you'll get bands now, Ten a Penny, who are full on shoegaze bands, but you're not going to see any Brit pop bands, and you're not going to see any grunge bands, really. Um, but yeah, it's um, after a few minutes, it drops its shoulder fully into that titan of UK Garage, which is the Robin S track, uh, which was destroyed by Beyonce. That was my least favorite track of that year, Break My Soul. It was an ugly piece of music. And then another staple of Burial, these like cascading churchy chimey synths going on. Um, it's almost like... I guess if you took the middle three minutes and the rest of its build and the rest of its sort of come down, the middle three minutes are pretty close to being a pop song of sorts in the manner of his peerless track Archangel from that Untrue album. Um, it's probably as close as he's come to being in that sort of arena. Uh, it's definitely the most commercially accessible one he's done. Um and the, the, then we drop into some uh, very trancey synths that reminded me of the, uh, again, astonishing track, Lona. And then it gets a lot more acidy. Um, and another thing that he did last time around, and I've seen it on a couple of his more recent tracks, is he'll save the last sort of minute and a half and then just go ballistic. And that's what he does here. We get a much harder charge up, charging through the last sort of 60 seconds of the track, which is 11 minutes long, of course. Um, which does set the tone for the um, excellent uh, Code 9 track, which is a bit more of a sort of techno clip speed-wise um, and percussion-wise, at the start anyway. 
Um, and it's also got a vocal that is close to being a real vocal, like in words that form almost a verse and a chorus. Um, and then it goes into like some completely batty, happy hardcore from the early 90s and then drum and bass, um, sort of like the machine gun rim shots going off um, and early 90s rave synths, which have been a staple of both their music. So I really think both tracks are really good and I think they both complement each other well. It goes on a journey um, and there's differences between the tracks. I think the burial track is a stronger, but there's also a lot of intrigue in the Code 9 track as well. Um, less so for the vocal, I feel, than for the musical elements, which are extremely strong. And it's very interesting. Um, I, I just kind of felt, listening to Phone Glows, that... I really wouldn't mind if Burial just said sod it and just did like a you know a 60 minute album that was just garage and two step and just like three or four minute tracks. That'd be great. Instead of like piling them into these giant 14 minute long suites. Um, it's almost like they're stretched and stretched and stretched. Um, but yeah, I thought a very strong release and probably not as as dazzling as the earlier released a couple of months ago from burial but that would have had more detractors i don't feel like anyone would really hate this one it's it's too likable and it's too easy to get well it's like you know if you've got a burial track you've waited six months or a year for and it's dolphin noises you sit there going oh man this sort of hits a sweet spot from the opening minute and then it's all the way through so i'm going to give um phone glow eyes go blank from burial and code nine an eight and a half out of ten <laughs> 